The era of globalization as we know it is set to come to an end as multinationals and governments try to look more inward and create more local roots to sustain and grow in their respective territories. Well, this impactful pronouncement is not something that I make, but it is from India's leading business leader and entrepreneur and arguably the OG of the Indian SaaS ecosystem, Sridhar Vembu. In a wide-ranging interview to the Economic Times, Vembu said that companies have to look inward and focus on their local markets as global supply chains get reshuffled after the onset of the pandemic. Today, in fact, we are experiencing shortages, component shortages in many industries because of China's lockdowns. It shows how fragile, how uh, non-robust all of our supply chains have been. And uh, just purely from an economic resilience point of view, this is not the way things should be. We cannot uh, depend on shipments around the world for basic essentials. And that's, I think, uh, fortunately what has happened. So, and so that is, I think, is the part of this. And then there is a second phenomenon, which is the rising debt among nations. And I have, uh, in fact, three, four years ago, I talked about Sri Lanka's debt and how that poses a severe challenge for them. And today, India has effectively had to rescue Sri Lanka with an emergency food, emergency fuel, uh, an emergency infusion of foreign exchange, all of them. So, and it's 60 billion in uh, debt and 5 billion in exports. Right. It's just not going to make, you know, the numbers never add up. Right? Yeah. So, that again, how Sri Lanka got into that much debt is one of the reasons why globalization is in trouble. But in any sensible uh, global monetary system, economic system, no country would have been as deep in the hole as Sri Lanka find, found itself in. You know, it would have had, it would have had to act much sooner. And when it acted sooner, they could have averted this much of what is going on right now. So, that is why I advocate that we have to return to sanity. We need global trade, much more balanced and not so much debt driven. That is really what I mean for. Broader, I mean, there is a short term impact of the war, all of that. More broadly, I would say that this era of globalization that we witnessed for the last 30 to 40 years is coming to an end. We have to be much more uh, local. And we, in Zoho, we have a, a philosophy we call transnational localism. That is, uh, and, and so we are moving towards a model where a lot more local uh, jobs are created, local work is done. And we are, we call it rooted and connected. So in each major economy we play in, we have a very strong rooted roots there. Then we are globally connected, use the connectivity. Uh, learn, share knowledge with all of our uh, internal uh, operations. So that's rooted and connected. That's the model that we are pursuing. And a lot of uh, other uh, big companies have come to the same conclusion. You look at uh, Volkswagen or uh, Mercedes-Benz. They are all moving towards a model that in Europe, it's, it's very obvious now that we have to move to a new model. And uh, so these companies, Volkswagen in particular, announced uh, sort of a deglobalization agenda. And this is one of the major, you know, biggest automakers in the world. So they have to be taken seriously. What are they see, right? It's the trends are obvious. So Indian companies have to plan the same way. So uh, there will be multinationals, but they will be much more locally rooted. This uh, definitely requires an adjustment. The margins would be lower. And some companies are better suited to this than others. If you look at, for example, TCS has always had Indian business. They are a very strong company operating in India, not just abroad. So, and uh, so they, I'm sure, will be much uh, easier for them. Other companies, uh, even Zoho, we have uh, mostly, uh, most of our earnings have been in exports. And we have to drastically improve our Indian revenue. And that margins would be lower and we have to be prepared to accept that. I think that would be a change. 
but more broadly it's not like exports go away entirely it's that you have to have balancing job creation all that in those economies because every country says well yeah they're happy for you to sell here but we also want the jobs here i think those all we have to keep in mind we don't want to see ourselves as a factory for the entire world like china has seen because there is no percentage in simply just exporting without importing in fact i you know that i actually have called for more exports from india to balance our imports but i definitely don't think that we should be going in the direction where we export a lot more than we import because it just means that we are very working very hard to get other people's paper like china has gotten a lot of paper paper assets from the us and you all of that i don't believe that that's a wise policy for india we have to be more balanced we need more exports because we are importing a lot but we don't want to overdo it and so i i do believe that with a democratic setup in india it is also not possible to run very large trade surpluses for very long periods because our workers will want the income and that income will translate into more imports the way that export surpluses have been sustained in china is through wage suppression as they call it although the chinese workers have not been paid in commensurate with their higher productivity and so they actually did not import as much as they would have if their their incomes were higher and that is something that is very hard to pull off in a democracy like that. so i do believe that we will have a more balanced trade but we do have to export more because we are importing there is a chill that has descended on the market there is a i don't know that it's a big winter yet but it definitely seems to be heading that way uh, you can see the global stock markets what happened in the nasdaq yesterday all of that there's four five percent drop uh, in global equities all of that so it's clearly we are heading towards uh, uh, and the public public markets are very much driving uh, venture capitalists as well so for a startup founder it is best to uh, and this is true in any time different of the funding is readily available or not it's best to focus on profitability and making sure your core business is viable that you don't need ever more infusion of money to stay afloat but in good times the stick sometimes is pulled off for long periods but when bad times arrive that's definitely not going to work the vcs will not want to fund ever growing losses so it would be a good idea to relook at the business models relook at your growth model and see how to balance the budget so your uh, your revenues are able to fund your operations so that is very important i think for any startup that is how i would urge founders to think